In the world of crocodiles, size is everything. And this one is an absolute monster. At six meters long, he's the boss of a gang of reptilian killers. The gang takes down and takes apart any animal within their grasp. But everything belongs to the boss. He rules by sheer size and explosive violence. He will maim or kill to keep control. But this year, a young male takes on the brutal hierarchy of the Croc Gangland. When a baby hippo dies of heat stroke on this beach, only one crocodile has the right to claim the bounty. He is the Croc Boss, the godfather of the ganglands. In crocodile hierarchy, size is power. And for many, many years, his 1,000 kilograms has topped the scales. As biggest croc on the beach, all food is his. The other crocodiles don't have the power or rank to oppose him. The boss didn't discover this carcass. One of the subdominant males found the prize. At three meters long, he is no small crocodile, but he lives on this beach and feeds at the discretion of Croc Boss. All the smaller crocodiles understand the rules. They only eat if the boss allows it. All along the river, territories work the same. Sections, each as big as four Olympic swimming pools, are dominated by a single large crocodile and his gang. Croc Boss is the biggest of them all. But for most of the year, there is a peaceful truce between him and the other leaders. Border skirmishes mostly occur during the mating season. Smaller crocodiles may join the gang as long as they obey three simple rules. Croc Boss gets the best food. He is respected at all times, and only he mates with receptive females. Gang members break the rules at their peril. But there is always a younger rival, trying to get big enough to become a boss in his own right. These pretenders are shadow bosses waiting for their moment. We call them phantoms. There have been other takeover bids. A smaller male tried to mate with one of the boss's females. It was a reckless move. The challenger's bony armor was no match for the boss's brutal bites, as powerful as a trash compactor. Discipline was swift and terminal. This croc boss's territory in Africa is a stretch of the Luangwa River in Zambia, in the South Luangwa National Park. 
It's a crocodile killing field, especially during the severe dry season. Inland lakes and pools dry up. And the river is the only water for kilometers around. All animals in the area must make long treks here to drink. And in 40 degree heat, many don't make it. The river's a lifeline and a death zone. For the croc gangs, the living is easy. Even the smaller ones get to feed. But crocs aren't the only gangs in town. Lions also know the riverbanks are teeming with easy pickings. And they're willing to fight the crocs for food. This puku antelope's caught between a rock and a hard place. After fleeing from the lions, he's stranded on an island in the croc-infested river. He's got to get off or starve. The lions won't swim after their prey. They'll wait for it to make a mistake. The puku's biggest threat lies in the water. The young phantom is perfectly placed for an attack. Away from the gang, this antelope is his to lose. There's no way the croc can catch the puku on the land. But there's no way the puku can outswim the croc. It's like a game of chess with life and death stakes. The puku has to use the land to put as much distance as he can between himself and the waiting croc. And figure out the shortest swim possible. The croc must anticipate the puku's escape route. boils down to a simple equation of speed versus distance. The croc submerges like a torpedo to reduce drag in the water. but his top speed of 10 kilometers per hour is not fast enough. The Puku's calculations pay off. He's foiled two top predators. The young croc misses an easy kill. His solo hunting attempt is a failure. But the dry season has another food bonus on offer. Huge numbers of hippos crush together in the Luangwa's diminishing deep water holes to keep cool. No crocodile, even one as big as Croc Boss, would attack a full-grown hippo. Mm -hmm. 
They are way too big and dangerous to take on. A single hippo bite would destroy a big crocodile. But the crocs don't need to try to kill the hippos. In crowds like this, these aggressive three-ton herbivores will often fight to the death. Leaving the croc gangs with a meat bonanza. A hippo carcass is one of the rare occasions when rival gang members join forces. Up to 200 crocs from different factions feed together. In fact, this cooperative frenzy serves a useful purpose. Crocs' jaws don't move from side to side. When the carcass is in water, they need others to pull against to help them rip off hunks of meat. It'll take them less than two days to completely demolish a one-ton hippo. With the most acidic stomach of any vertebrate, crocodiles can digest every centimeter of a carcass. And as usual, the final chunk of meat goes to the croc boss. No other croc has the power to argue. Cooperation is officially over. Back on dry land, the lion pride is also living well off the deadly dry season. There's no need to hunt when the scavenging is so good. They rule the riverbanks just beyond the Crocs reach. They own this feeding ground and the Crocs know it. Even Croc Boss won't come up here to try to take this carcass off the lions. But anything that dies closer to the water is in no man's land. And that means war, lion versus croc. A dead elephant offers up a gigantic feast for the croc gang. They didn't kill it. The deadly dry season serves up another meat mountain. In this brutal time, even elephants are vulnerable. They need massive amounts of water, up to 200 liters a day. If they don't get enough to drink, heat stroke can quickly kill them. The crocs have the carcass now, but they don't own it. It's right in the conflict zone. The lions have started feeding on it and they haven't finished. This prize is too big to give up without a fight. One young male wants more. His scrappy mane indicates he's barely two years old, but he's big and dangerous. Most of the crocs know to keep their distance. Even this immature lion can kill them. But the inexperienced smaller crocs are willing to take him on. This is not a competition Croc Boss needs to get into. The pickings are slim, and if the gang wins, the carcass is his for the taking anyway. Mm. 
Without backup, the young lion isn't sure of himself. The crocodiles win today. The gang now goes to work as fast as they can. It's a race to rip as much meat as possible from the carcass. The young pretender wrestles a leg joint away from the smaller gang members. Aggression, theft, and brutality are the ultimate tools for survival. In crocodile hierarchy, bigger individuals are always looking to exploit the little guy. The smaller crocs have learned well from the master. But there is only one master. Croc boss comes to claim his dues. For the smaller crocs, the feeding is over. There is no way for the phantom to mount a challenge. To have any hope of running the gang, he must bulk up. And he can't do that on leftovers from the boss. He's got to find his own food. And the numerous drinking pools next to the river provide the perfect hunting ground. Every morning and evening, the antelope journey here to quench their thirst. A perfect opportunity for an ambush. But the Impala are on high alert. To have any hope of catching one, the young croc must find the perfect pool in which to disappear and wait. The Impala are smart to the crocodile strategy. They try to drink together where there's safety in numbers. The crocodile must wait for a loner. The trap is set. He can hold his breath for two hours. And this impala has no clue that below the surface lurks a ravenous crocodile poised to strike. The young croc blows it. Impatience costs him a meal. Crocs can launch their entire body out of the water in less than half a second. But timing is everything and he has a lot to learn. The prey is spooked. The hunt is over. It's a half chance for the lions. But it's a long chase, too exposed. And they're not that desperate.
They don't have to try too hard. In the dry season, death is always just around the corner. After the unsuccessful hunt, the young croc has to recover and recharge his batteries. Crocodiles bask to keep their body temperature up and digest more efficiently. Crocodiles are not cold-blooded. Their bodies are as warm as ours most of the time. They just have to work harder to keep their temperature between 33 and 35 degrees. Phantom needs to regain energy. During extreme exertion, crocodiles build up a huge amount of lactic acid. This is toxic and must be eliminated from their systems. The only way is rest. Part of Croc Boss's success is his energy strategy. He lets the smaller gang members exert themselves. They work and he eats. and they have the most unexpected allies. Water birds are usually fair game for crocodiles. But during the dry season, there's a truce. The birds don't fear the crocs. Instead, they collaborate with them. As water disappears from the inland lagoons, fish become trapped in the shallows. Jammed together, they are easy for the birds to catch. Every attempt nets a mouthful of fish. The crocodiles benefit in exactly the same way and work with the birds to corral the fish into ever tighter spaces. Each fish is a tiny meal, but for the small crocs, this technique is well worth the effort. But for a monster like Croc Boss, chasing small fry is a total waste of energy. He'll wait and preserve his energy for bigger game and other activities that are his alone to enjoy. The dry season doesn't just bring a food bonanza. There's an even bigger prize, mating. The ritual begins at dawn. Lifting their heads, the females show submission and look for the most powerful croc to mate with. The boss raises his body and literally stands out in the river. It's a visible sign of his status. By rights, all receptive females are his. But the young pretender is also drawn in. The females secrete a pheromone into the water. It signals they're ready. But even the boss must perform before he can mate. It's the only situation he cannot control. The final choice is made by the females. In mating season, females are permitted to wander through rival gang territories as they check out potential partners. The boss's head slaps and bubble blowing are the crop equivalent of beating your chest. It works.
a smaller male can only watch. For a one-ton monster, the boss's mating ritual is surprisingly tender. He blows bubbles that delicately tickle the female's sensitive neck area. The pair will remain together for up to one hour before choosing new partners. But one smaller female is not prepared to wait. She's interested in the younger rival. The boss's dance is coming to the end. The pair submerges for their final act. And while his leader is underwater, Phantom chances his luck. didn't get where he is by being inattentive. For a junior to mate with one of his females is the worst kind of disrespect. He must be punished. Others have been killed for less. The young croc is now swimming for his life. He's offended in the worst way. And croc boss will kill him if he can catch him. But his chase is half-hearted. The boss is still distracted by the mating privileges that come with his position. The young pretender gets off with a warning bite. Now the insubordinate is dealt with. The boss can return to more gentle pursuits. The right to mate is still a long way off for this young croc. He needs to grow, and to do that, he's got to grab every opportunity to hunt. Fortunately, the relentless dry season serves up an endless convoy of thirsty prey. Twice a day, regular as clockwork, Impala and Wildebeest gather to drink. It's another chance to make a kill. These Impala are safe. They know exactly where the danger lurks. Some even follow the croc to keep an eye on him. He is searching for the perfect place to spring a trap.
Even when he finds a likely pool, watching impalas raise the alarm. They snort to warn others to stay away from this drinking spot. But with an unending stream of animals coming to drink, it isn't long before one individual doesn't get the message. Even though this impala senses something, it's compelled to drink. Thirst overrides fear, but it's braced for danger. Every muscle is hardwired for escape. strike. But can the young croc hang on? For a second it looks like this impala might escape. But it dislocates its leg and it's all over. The timing of Phantom's ambush was a tiny bit off. He only manages to grab the impala's horn and is forced to bite again. But in the struggle, the impala's leg is tangled in its own horn and it's all over. It won't be a quick death. He will have to drag his kill into the deeper river to drown it. Ambush hunting is what crocs do best. But timing is everything. Phantom's first attempt was too rushed, and he lost his meal. But the young pretender is learning. This time, he patiently waited for the Impala to make a crucial mistake. As the ram is joined by the female, he relaxes and drinks for a fraction of a second too long. A fatal error. has made a mistake too. His perfect ambush is in full view of the gang. Now he must fight to keep it. And the croc boss has also seen the takedown. This meal is now his. The young croc has no right to oppose the boss. But he's not going to give it up willingly. He's hungry and stubbornly hangs on. But he hasn't the strength to compete. The 
rest of the gang fights to get a bite onto the Impala. They try to lock on before the boss begins his death roll. As the giant spins, he literally tears the Impala to pieces. Any of the gang that can hang on may end up with a big chunk of meat. The Impala has gone from living animal to meat chunks in a couple of seconds. Some of the gang manages to snag a piece, but not the pretender. In the gang lands, catching the prey doesn't guarantee you eat the prey. Hunting and fighting are a major drain on a smaller crocodile's energy reserves. Phantom must rest to build up his strength. Other animals have no such energy restrictions. Away from the river, the African night hums with activity. For the prey species, the danger doesn't let up just because it's dark. Impala and Puku rarely lie down to sleep for more than 10 minutes at a time. There are too many predators on the hunt, so they are forced to stay awake and alert. Lions take advantage when the crocodiles can't. Tonight, a puku loses the battle. Dry season around the Luangra River is not a good time to be a herbivore. Another day, another death. Another free meal for the croc gangs. As the sun warms the crocs, it triggers a feeding frenzy on the hippo carcass. Crocs from multiple gangs wait in line to feed. Territorial differences set aside for the moment. Size determines the order, and the biggest eat first. The young pretender and the other smaller crocs must wait. The boss has torn away a huge hunk of the dead hippo. And in a strange twist, he is now being harried by a living hippo. One of the few creatures that can kill a big crocodile. In a bizarre scene, the croc boss is being menaced by a huge hippo as it consumes his dead relative. At first glance, this looks like a challenge for food. But hippos are exclusive herbivores. They've been known to lick carcasses, possibly for salt or minerals. But something else seems to be going on here. Perhaps like elephants, the hippo senses the death of one of its own. But it looks like the hippo is being aggressive. Perhaps this is some kind of primitive emotional reaction. Whatever the hippo's motivation, the huge crocodile knows this is dangerous. 
With 50 centimeter long canines and a bite force 27 times more powerful than a human's, this hippo could easily skewer the huge croc. For the first time in a long time, the boss is being pushed around by a bigger beast. It's time to retreat. Success in a croc gang is all about being a consummate opportunist. And now the young croc sees an opening. A chance for food. Perhaps the possibility to gain ground in the gang. But the croc boss doesn't share. And this bid for food has been interpreted differently. It's now a power struggle. And the boss's violent death roll is a deadly attack. Instant retreat is the only acceptable way out, and the younger croc doesn't take it. This can only end in one of two ways, death or injury to the smaller croc. He gets off lightly. He is alive. But it's still a disaster. He pays for the transgression with his own flesh and blood. The monster croc ripped his top jaw clean off. Amazingly, the smaller croc will survive this hideous injury. Crocodiles have special antibodies to help them heal from massive wounds. But it will not regrow. He is not just deformed, but terribly handicapped. His journey to the top position is over. From now on, he will be the last in line to feed. The croc boss and every crocodile, small or large, must now be shown subservience by the challenger. Even by nature's own harsh measures, the croc gang lands are a brutal environment where size and uncompromising violence rule. 